It's my feel good breakfast show. Oh, it's all about our pets today. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast show. And yes, we love our pets and we want mm -hmm. the best for them. But with some misinformation, flooding the internet and mixed advice from friends, it can sometimes be very overwhelming. Now here with us today, we have Karis Nafti alongside Sam to talk to us about what is poisonous to our cats and dogs and how to treat them. Of course, we need to keep in mind some of the plants we have in the house, some of those household chemicals. So, Karis, it's so great that you can join us. Good morning. Happy Both of you, here. actually. Yes, well, Sam's the most important one. I'm no. just, yes, you know. Sammy, <laughs> hello. Listen, I've just gone through something very scary and I'm still trying to figure out what it was with my animal and potentially it could have been a plant, something in the household, I don't know. We're trying to still figure that out. So, let's figure this out together, maybe. Let's start in the household. What is it when it comes to household products or anything in the household that we use that could potentially be poisonous to our animals? Is there anything to look out for? There's lots of things. Oh, no. Oh, lots no. Of things. <laughs> okay. So certainly anything non-edible that an animal shouldn't eat, you All have right. to be cautious of. But specific things that often cause poisoning problems for dogs are things like fertilizer for the garden, believe oh. it or not, can be poisonous for the dogs. Um, Rat and mouse poison, yes. which is obviously meant to be palatable. A lot of dogs eat that and cats and end up getting sick from that. Snail poison, things like um, bleach, any sort of cleaning chemicals, mothballs <laughs> are poisonous to dogs. Yeah. So anything like that that's meant to, there we go, Sam, um, cl basically clean up the house or affect the, the garden in terms of ke chemical things can all be poisonous to animals. So it's really, really important that you, yeah, you have to, Look at everything through the eyes of the dogs. It might be remotely edible and keep your dog away from all of those kind of things. Yeah. So um, for someone that perhaps now has an animal and they're freaking out, what, where is a great place to find out about the alternatives? So instead of using bleach, what else can we use? Instead of using fertilizer, yeah. are there, you know, information sources where we can go to to make sure that we have the pet-friendly chemicals or, yes. or products in the house? So I think it's not necessarily re realistic to get all pet-friendly chemicals. I think the best way to start is to dog-proof your house. So there might be pet-friendly alternatives, which you can certainly check on the internet. Um, some natural shops might have things. But the safest thing to do is make sure that things are completely locked away from the animal. You never want to leave, especially a dog, bless them, unattended where they could possibly chew on a bottle and rip something open. If something's got an interesting taste, mm. you know, Dogs will chew on stuff and they'll explore things with their mouth. So, um, yeah, you can check at all the natural health shops, but the best thing to do is to keep any oh, he's, sort he's of done house. With this he's done. He's bored now. He's like, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna lie down now. <laughs> Sam is yes. Oh, you wanted tickles. You wanted tickles. Oh, Sam's just making himself at home, guys. Excuse us. There we I go. I love it. I wish I could just roll around with, on the carpet like you. Well, Karis, I mean, we also, yeah. if we go into our garden, I yes. think a lot of people have plants that they might not even realize are poisonous to their animals. Are you able to name some of these that we can perhaps, you know, that are a bit common that we might mm. not know of? Yes. So the most common, interestingly, the most common dangerous plant that I have to work with people about are lilies. So there's a, often those beautiful cut beautiful flowers, lady. beautiful lilies yeah. are very toxic to dogs and cats. A lot of cats, like if you put a beautiful vase of lilies on your table, will go and chew on yeah. them and munch on the flowers and that can be poisonous. Is it the flower so, only or the leaves? Because I literally have lilies growing in my garden. Yes, exactly. Should I pull so, it out? <laughs> what should I do? I don't know. Yes, maybe pull it out. I, yeah, I would I would fence it off from your dogs because if okay. they do eat the flowers, it can be toxic. Yeah. All right. Oh. So, yeah, so lilies is the most common problem. Delicious monsters, you know, those big, beautiful green leaves. What? Those are actually toxic to dogs and what? cats, but they're not very palatable. So most of them don't eat it. But if you have a dog, like some dogs are gardeners. I'm putting that, that's a nice way to say it. <laughs> some dogs chew up in the garden. So if you have a dog that is prone to just eating lots of stuff. You have to be vigilant with things like delicious monsters, syringa trees, chrysanthemums, um, rhododendrons, all of these things are poisonous to dogs. So it's really, really smart. If you have a beautiful garden, do some Googling, do some checking it out. Very often, very pretty flowers are toxic because that's how they, pr that's how they protect themselves in nature, oh. is they don't taste, they're, they're dangerous to animals if they eat them. My so word. a lot of our most beautiful flowers, unfortunately, are not safe for animals. I have eight delicious monsters. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but but they're not gardeners. So but they're not gardeners. Yeah. yeah, so I have, I, have, <laughs> I have them in my house too, but my dogs don't chew on those plants. So you just have to be aware of it, but you don't have to rip everything out. But you do have to, you have to know your animals, 
animals. You have to know, like, if a guest, you know, a friend with a dog comes over with a puppy that's going to be chewing on stuff. You just always have to pay of attention. Yeah. yeah. All right. This is making sense. We're getting there, and this is educational indeed, and this conversation is going to continue before this happens. Oh, stand by. <laughs> it's my feel-good breakfast show. It's your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on S3. Welcome back. And we are joined again by pet custody mediator and certified dog behavior consultant, Karis Nafti. She is here to ensure us that it's not all doom and gloom when it comes to pets and poisonous ingredients around our house, that there are indeed treatments and precautions that we can take to ensure our furry friends are in good hands from the get-go. Yeah, and I would found out earlier that there are a few things that could present uh, potential risks in the house and outside in the garden. But let's talk about what happens if a dog is in that situation and may have had or consumed poison, and not even a dog, a cat, or any pet for that matter. What are some of the, let's say, signs and symptoms to maybe look out for? And is there this possibility that a dog could maybe be allergic to someone, something as well? Is that possible? Definitely. So okay. there's two, your a body can react to anything. It can be an allergen. So some dogs and cats are allergic to certain kind of foods. Okay. And that will typically show up in itchy skin. Um, that's the most common symptom yeah. of a food allergy is like chronic foot infections or ear infections. Um, but anytime an animal is itching a lot, something is not something right. Is it's, they okay. either have a flea issue, but it's most likely a food allergy. Uh. So allergies is definitely a thing that can happen for lots of animals. And then in terms of Poisons, it, it, poison is a different thing. Poison is something toxic yeah. that would be toxic to any animal. And the signs of that are things, the most common sign is that your dog gets super tired or your cat. Suddenly they're just like laying down on the floor like a puddle. Drooling is always a bad sign. Right. It means something is wrong with the dog's stomach. If they've suddenly got diarrhea, if they're tr suddenly throwing up a lot, um, and they're just acting very, very unwell. Suddenly scratching their stomach can be a sign. I mean, it's really sad when you see it happening. Mm. If any of those signs are happening to your dog, take them to the vet okay. immediately. Don't wait. By the time a poison gets in a dog's system or a cat's, it's sometimes been there for a few days. So what people have to understand about a dog eating a poisonous substance is it doesn't show up immediately. It can oh. sometimes take three or four days for it to show itself in the system. Yeah. So by the time your dog is showing symptoms of this or your cat, you gotta get them to the vet straight away. It's not like they're gonna eat the poison and then two minutes later necessarily show, show right. any symptoms of that. Great advice, thank yeah. you for that. And what should you do as a pet owner, you know, if you suspect your, your animal's been poisoned before you take them to the vet? Mm. So the first thing to do is to try to figure out what it was so you can give that information to the vet. Different substances do different things to a dog's body or a cat's body. So look around the house, look where anywhere the dog has been, look in the garden for chewed plants or chewed up packages in the house. That's the first thing you should try to do. What you should not do, and this is so important for viewers, is don't try to make your animal vomit unless the vet tells you to. Because with certain poisons, if you make your animal vomit, it can make them more sick. Oh, cool. So it's not one of those, oh, just make the dog vomit. Definitely not. So get the dog as quickly as you can to a vet. If the vet isn't in your area, call one, but you need to get medical advice to figure out what the exact treatment needs to be for the dog. And most important, try to figure out what the poison was because that will save a lot of time at the vet. They don't, then, they, then they don't have to try to figure it out themselves. Nice, okay. Yeah. What, what, what sort of like a treatment would you experience? Is it quite a rough sort of situation that you have to go through with the animal or is it kind of all the same when it comes to poisons? It, I think it's very different depending on what the poison is doing to the dog's body. So the yeah. first thing a vet will do is they'll try to stabilize the animal. So it's usually, they usually will take the animal away from you and work on them in the back. Most most animals end up on some kind of a drip, okay. um, but it's very, very different depending on if what part of the body is reacting to it. Some poisons can send animals into organ failure, which is a very intense treatment. Some animals just need, you know, a bit of allergics and to have a have a good toilet trip and then they're fine. So it depends <laughs> on how much of the poison they ate. Yeah. Depends on how big the animal is. If a chihuahua eats a little bit of poison, it can be a big problem, whereas if a Rottweiler does, maybe not so much. <laughs> so it depends on the size of your animal, depends on how much they ate and what it actually was. But don't wait going to the vet. Don't wait and see and think about it. If you suspect something wrong, some, it probably is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like that advice. Karis, what are some of the precautions we as pet owners can take in the house to make sure that our pets are safe? So first of all, assume if your animal can eat something that they will. 
Okay, <laughs> just assume, assume worst case scenario. Dogs can figure out how to open cupboards. So in the same way you might baby proof a house, like closing cupboard yeah. doors, if you have a very busy, enthusiastic, inquisitive, clever dog, okay, those dogs are such fun and they're trouble. They know those, <laughs> those, They're naughty. Those are the dogs who will open cupboards and pull things out. So um, secure your cupboard doors if you've got a dog that could possibly physically open it. Assume your dog would jump on a counter. So if there's something tasty that smells good up on a counter, your dog could jump up. I had to help a client the other day who had a poodle who jumped on the counter and ate a bowl of xylitol, which, oh. I, which I forgot to mention earlier. Xylitol, we know it's that sugar substitute. Yeah. It's fine for us, super poisonous for dogs. Oh. Okay? Oh, okay. So anything tasty, if your dog can eat it, they will. <laughs> so, <laughs> so look through those eyes, and you have to physically secure your property, so that, and don't ever put your animal in a situation where they can eat something they shouldn't. And when it comes to cats, cats can jump everywhere. Mm. If cats can get into something, they can. So uh, look from a little house panther point of view and physically block them off from anything dangerous. That's just the safest way to do it. Absolutely incredible advice, Chris. Thank you so much. Thank Such you for always advice. joining us and educating us when it comes to our furry animals, our pets, the ones that we love so much. And I think this has really given us some insights. Yeah. And for you, Mzanzi, too, giving your pets the best is sometimes easier than you think. I mean, if you listen to this, you'll know why. By thinking and keeping the cleaning supplies locked up and paying attention to what your pet is eating, you can ensure your pets live a long and healthy life. Okay. Mm. Well, Karis Nafti, thank you so much for joining us once again. And thank you, Samuel. Oh, You've been a good boy. Thank what is you. it about adults that no. go all cutie cutie <laughs> to that animal? <laughs> 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 <laughs>